cannot believe I am filming this video. This is a dream that I didn't even know I could dream of. <laughs> I have designed and published my very own sewing project planners. And if you've been following me for like a while from like close to the beginning, then you probably know that I am a planner girl, a paper planner girl at that. It's just how my brain works. And I have had paper planners for as long as I can remember. I have done the happy planner. I have done Erin Condren. I have done the home edit. I have done all the paper planners you can possibly imagine tried them all, found the things that I liked, know the things that I don't like. And when it comes to like a daily, weekly, monthly planner, I got what I need. But when it came to how to incorporate my sewing into those planners, I felt like I was always just sort of wanting more and never really could find what I needed. So what do you do but make your own? <laughs> which is exactly what I did. I cannot believe that I have these planners available. It's so exciting and so much fun. And it's just like my planner girl heart and my sewing girl heart and my organizing heart are like all coming together in this like Venn diagram of just like elation and happiness. And I just hope that you guys resonate with that feeling as well. So we are going to look through the planners. I'm going to explain the difference between the two of them, answer some frequently asked questions that I've already got about them. Uh, but before we do that, hello, we've got company. Um, before we do that, please be sure to give this video a like, subscribe to the channel if you're not already, and click the bell if you want to get notified. Um, and if you're brand new here, you've never seen one of my videos before, hello and welcome. I am Lindsay. I post videos all about sewing, mostly helping um, you guys learn how to sew, but also be inspired, motivated, and stay on track with your sewing projects, which is exactly what uh, these planners are going to help you do. So introduce yourself in the comments section below so that I can get to know you a little better as well. All right, without further ado, let's jump to the overhead shot so I can do a planner flip through with each of the planners that are available. All right, so here are the two covers. You have the color one that has the I'd rather be sewing little icon 2022 sewing project planner checklist and journal. And then the um, binding has some more of the like pattern pieces and then the back just says created by me. And then the black and white one has like cute little sewing notions, a nice little vintage-y kind of vibe. And then 2022 sewing project planner checklist and journal. The binding has some more of that vintage um, notions. And then this is what the back looks like. We are gonna flip through the color one first. You're gonna find that they're very familiar or very similar, but we are gonna look through them both. Um, the first page is this sewing planner belongs to, and then you have information about yourself. And then, oh, look, it's me. Um, little information about me in here. And then this is where the actual planner starts. So every single month has a page dedicated to a quote that kind of speaks to that month. And since January is the beginning of the year, this quote is about beginnings. And then you open up to your two page lined calendar spread. So two pages obviously means it stretches across both. Um, you have all your dates for the month. Um, and then you have a little sidebar here that has um, a little area where you need, if you need to remember some things, um, some notes that you need to take, things that you need to buy and any errands that you need to run. Um, it starts on Sunday and goes through Saturday. Then you turn the page and this is where the project planning begins. So each project has a three page planning system. The first one is getting your idea about the project together. So your inspiration, pattern options, fabric options, if you have a deadline for it, your notions list, and then your shopping list, as well as any notes that you have. The next page is your to-do, like your checklist. So again, you've got like all the steps it takes to sew a pattern from buying the fabric all the way down to adding your label. 
and then it kind of reiterates some stuff about the um, pattern what pattern you're working on the shopping list um, what size to cut any pattern alterations that you need to make based on the fast fit workbook and um, any notes that you have and in the notes here I have the seam allowance and the stretch um, that is required for the fabric. So those are some ideas of things you'd put in the notes section. And then the third and final page of each little project planner is the journal. So this is where you're gonna write down like the rating that you gave the pattern, ideas for future versions, whether that's different fabrics or different inspiration, fit updates for next time, any hack ideas you have, and just any final thoughts. And then this is a fun little exercise just to celebrate that you sewed something, you know, try it on, do a happy dance, show it off at home, wear it with pride, twirl around in it, take it out on the town, post it to social, and strike a pose in it. So you can check off as many or as few of those things that you want to do, but I think it's so important to celebrate each and every project that you finish because let's be real, it's hard work. Um, okay, so then once in between each of those project planners is another page, full page for a quote. And all of these quotes are about creativity and inspiration and things just to keep you going. So you'll have another quote page and then three more project pages, and then a quote page, and three more project pages. And then this goes through five times. So every month you have five project planner sets, and also five quotes. And then at the end of the month, you have a month in review page. Projects I finished, works in progress I finished, projects I added to my works in progress, and my goals for the next month, okay? Then it starts all over again and you have February's quote. January's for dreamers, February's for doers. Um, so then we go into February. Same deal, month, you, all your project planning and quotes. And then your February month in review. And then we go into March's quote. And it goes like that through all of the months of the year. And then at the very end, you have one final quote for the year. And now we welcome the new year full things that full of things that have never been. And this is to kind of inspire you for 2023. And then you have a whole section of notes. So I think I wanna say it's four or five pages, one, two, three, four, five, six pages of notes, and then a blank page in the back as well. So that is the planner in a nutshell. The only difference between the color version and the black and white version when it comes to design is Obviously, it's black and white, <laughs> and um, the uh, fonts, the fonts that are used and a lot less sort of color saturation, like the whole background of this page is white rather than the color version where it's like a color. <clears throat> and then you can see the fonts for the headers are different, um, and then all of the fonts for the project pages as well are a little bit simpler and less curly cue and all that. And again, white background, dark text on these pages. And then this is what the uh, month in review looks like. Again, more simple text. Everything's just cleaner and a little bit more streamlined and a little less I don't want to say girly because I don't want to associate gender with any of this, but you know, it's a little less feminine. Maybe that's a good way to say it. If it's not, then what do I know? Anyways, so it's the exact same planner through and through, just black and white and different fonts and just less saturation of color, grayscale or otherwise, um, throughout. And then this is what your notes page looks like. There you go. There's your notes pages. So that's the black and white version. Okay, so some frequently asked questions I've gotten about the planners. One is, can I get them spiral bound? And I am with you. Trust me, my preference is spiral bound as well. The pages lay flatter. Um, it's just a superior way to have a planner. And I know that. But unfortunately, Amazon Publishing, who I am getting these printed through, does not offer that as an option. You have Kindle, you have paperback, and you have hardback, and that is it. Um, so unfortunately, I could not get them spiral bound, like produced that way, but I am researching options for how to take the actual book as is into a place and have them bind it for me 
I'm looking at pricing and availability and all of that kind of stuff. So as soon as I have some more information on how to get these spiral bound, I will be sure to let you know. But believe me, if Amazon ever makes that available, that is going to be the choice that I go with. I get it. I'm with you. I am also getting a lot of questions about the difference between color and black and white, um, other than the price. So the color version is either right at double or maybe even a little bit more than twice the price of the black and white. And that literally just has everything to do with the quality of the paper that's inside the planner. The difference is when you have like full color pages like this one, you have to use paper that can withstand that much ink. So that's why the color planner is so expensive. The black and white planner is on a lesser quality paper technically, but honestly, I can't really tell a difference. So if you are somebody that is just looking to have a planner where you can stay organized and you don't totally care about the design of it, color isn't something that inspires you, just get the black and white one, honestly. All that to say, there's no difference design wise, there's no difference page count wise, there's no difference in anything other than the thickness of the paper that's inside the book. All right, so how I am going to be using these. Um, I am relegating this planner specifically toward my sewing projects and nothing else. So although you have a full calendar uh, and you can plan out your entire life in that calendar, I am really gonna use this to mark out sewing days, days that I'm gonna set aside to sew. I'm going to be marking in their due dates for different projects that I have, whether it's, you know, a self-imposed deadline, like sew together, or whether it's, you know, I have a, a sponsorship or something that is due and I need to get that in here as well. So that's how I plan on using the calendar. There's also, as I showed earlier, a notes section, a to buy section, an errand section. So I know, do I need to go to Joanne this month? Do I need to, you know, buy notions from somewhere? Um, and that can help me stay organized at a glance, which is the most important thing when it comes to planning, I think. Um, getting it out of your brain, onto paper, so where when you need to be reminded, you can just quickly find it. And then obviously all of my projects I plan on putting in the planner. I've already started to use it for the Sew Together project for January, the Jolly Emily. And, you know, I filled out the inspiration page. Um, kind of getting my thoughts together about what I wanted my version of that sweater to look like. Um, I did include the deadline for that since it's not a hard deadline, but there is sort of a suggestion of a deadline. Um, notions list, and that doesn't always to me include, or doesn't exclusively include like buttons and zippers and things, but also thread and needles. So if I decide on a fabric, I'm gonna check my serger thread and my machine thread and check and make sure I have needles and just make sure I have everything I need in order to make that project. Um, and then some notes that I have in here um, are related to like that it's so together and just help me remember that. And then one of my favorite pages, the to-do page <clears throat> is really fun because you can visually see how far along in the process you are. So I have yet, I've done everything other than getting the um, pattern pieces cut out. Um, I haven't done anything beyond that, but you can see all these check marks and it feels so good to check things off. Um, and I've got a real quick, you know, easy at a glance way to remind myself of what size I need to cut. So when I do cut those pattern pieces, I'm not trying to find the little scrap of paper where I wrote the sizes down. It's right here, right where everything else is about the project. I put seam allowances in the notes. I put stretch in the notes. Um, when I redesign this, I might include that to be like a more permanent part. I feel like that's really important to like actually write down every time um, to find it, confirm it, write it down so that you know that you are sewing it correctly. So that's that. And then at the end of every project, you know, I'll be filling out the journal just to remember like what did I think about this project? What are some hack ideas I have for the next version? You know, what are some alterations I want to make for next time? That way, if I ever do go back and make the pattern again, I'm not going off memory. I'm going off of like my actual thoughts in the moment. So I'll be doing that for, you know, every project I gave 
myself and all of you five projects every month, um, which is enough one a week plus an extra. And if you saw my um, resolutions list, you know that I'm really trying hard to not plan out more than that. I know there will be months that I do, but um, I'm really trying to, you know, help use the planner to help me sort of be realistic about what I can accomplish in a month as well. Um, and you can use the calendar and write down what projects you want to sew every week and help keep yourself on track that way as well. So that's how I plan on using it. That's how I plan on using the monthly calendar and then all of the pages, um, all the project pages inside. So as I mentioned before, the planners are available through Amazon. Um, and Amazon Prime. So if you're an Amazon Prime member, you can get free shipping. It took me about three days to get the planner from the day that I ordered it. I want to say, I can't remember if it was even on a weekend or not, but it's not the typical Amazon shows up the next day kind of thing. Like three or four days, I think, um, is about the turnaround. You can have it in hand by next week if you wanted. Publishing the book through Amazon was really the simplest way. I'm not convinced it's the best way, but for right now, um, that's where it is. So that's where you guys can get it. All right, those are the planners. I, like I said, I'm super excited about them. I hope you are too. I know a few people have already ordered them and have them in hand. I'm hearing a lot of really great things about them. So um, yeah, if you're looking to get organized, stay on track not lose your sojo and you know enjoy a whole year of organized sewing um grab one of my planners the link is in the description box and i can't wait to hear what you guys think thanks so much for watching i will see you next time bye